Hey guys, Chad Trofgerben here. Welcome back yet again to the Steve and the Alien tutorial series. We are now focusing our attention on the profile shot for this animation. And basically for this, we're gonna have the van drive by, and then a few seconds later, you see the UFO chase after the van. And this will come after an interior shot that we will be animating in a later lesson. So I like to do all the exterior shots first and then focus in on the interior. It just makes things a little easier, especially since your mindset is focused on the outside. And then you can piece it all together later on in a video editing software. However, if you like to go very linear from point A to point B, in other words, from the exterior to the interior, you can always skip ahead, watch the interior tutorial, and then come back here to watch this one after you have finished the interior shot of Steve. So anyway, with all of that said, let's get started. First, you need to open up the profile shot of the highway, as you can see on my screen. And once you do this, go to File, Save As, and save this document as a new file, because again, you want to keep the original just in the event that you tweak with this too much and you want to revert back or if something happens. So once you have saved this as a new file, I next need to bring in the UFO in the van. So go to File, Import, Anime Studio Object, and then we can locate the van. And I'll bring in the van side shot. Next, we want the UFO. So again, I will go to File, Import, Anime Studio Object, and choose UFO. And we now have the UFO on the screen. So let's bring all of these objects to the left side of the screen. So I will just make sure that everything is over here. We have the van over here. And I will bring the UFO over there as well. Now we want to probably increase the size of these objects if they are too small for you. So we'll take the scale tool and just increase the size of this and then grab the van and we'll also increase the size of that to about right there. Now one more thing we might want to do for the UFO is draw a shadow for it just to give this a little bit more depth. And so if we decide that the van will be right here um, when driving, we'll probably want the shadow to be really close to where the van is. So we can go into the UFO group and make a new layer and name it shadow. And we can just make sure again that that layer is in the group layer and underneath um, the UFO parts. Now taking the shape tool, we can choose the oval and make sure our fill is set to black as well as the stroke. And then we can just simply come in here and starting at about the end of the UFO, we just come over and drag in like this. And end of course at the other end of the UFO and again, we can make sure that that shadow is matching where the tires sit for the UFO, or for the van, excuse me. So once you've done that, we can also double click on the shadow layer and make this opacity at about 75. And you can also increase the blur radius if you wish as well. And if I just run to this really quick, you can see that the shadow has an opacity and the blur kind of gives it a softer look. Okay, so once we have all that in play, we next want to animate out the objects. So I'll move the UFO so it's out of sight of the stage and move the van out of sight as well. 
Now, I would recommend giving about a second or two before you have the van come on screen. So we'll just page forward about two seconds and I will add a keyframe using my move or translate layer tool. You just click on your object and it'll lay down a keyframe. Then we want the van to go across the screen. So we can try at about four seconds in. We can just click and drag this. And now we have the van drive. And what we can do as well, you'll remember in my last tutorial I talked about this, we can change this tween to linear. So right click and choose linear. And all that does is it removes the effect that the van is um, speeding up and slowing down. It's just a constant speed right now. And we might need to adjust the speed of how fast the van drives, but we can ch check that out in a little bit. So the van drives and then we have a few seconds and then I say about two seconds later we should have the UFO come into play. So I can take my UFO group layer and just nudge this over with my move layer tool or the translate layer tool. And then once we have established that keyframe at 144, I'll just move in again and go to about 192 and then just drag the UFO like this. So then going back to 144, I can just right click and choose linear as the tween type. And then it'll just come in like that. So going back to frame one, we can just first play this, but remember, if we have the uh, frame set to only 144, yet our animation extends out to 192, we won't see the whole animation play out. So let's make sure that this frame number is above 192 or equal to 192. So just for right now, I'll set it to 200 because that will give us a little room to play with as well. And now once you've done that, we can just play this. We have a few seconds or a couple seconds, the van drives in and then you have the UFO chase. I think we could speed these objects up a little bit. So I'll bring the van back. Um, I'll click on the van to bring its timeline back, I should say. And let's move the end keyframe down a bit like this and try that. That looks a little bit better. Maybe I can even just nudge it up slightly like this. Halfway in between about uh, seconds three and four. And that should work. Now for the UFO, since the van um, exits quicker, we might want to bring both the entrance and exit keyframes for the UFO up just a bit. So I can just highlight and um, select both of those keyframes and then just drag them up a bit like this. So then we have then the UFO come to play and I want that to go a little bit quicker. So we'll nudge that back to about there. And we can try playing this again. The van drives and then the UFO comes in and chases. Okay. Now finally, I would like to add just a little bit of camera movement to this because, because again, that's something I like to do with my animations. I like to have camera movement. It just, again, gives it more of a cinematic quality in Anime Studio makes it really easy to move the camera and such. So what I'll do is go back to frame one, grab the track camera tool, and then move the camera over like this, just slightly so, you know, we're on the edge of the road here as far as where the camera is positioned. And then I'll go to, let's say frame 192, and in fact, I can just adjust my duration here to be two frame 192 because I don't think we need to go any further than that. And then I will just move the camera back like this. So now if we hit play, we have kind of a pan going on and we have the car drive and then the UFO chase. And I think that adds a little bit more to it. I kind of, I like the way that looks. So I think that will work. 
And that pretty much does it for this shot. Now again, you can go in and do some modifications. You might need to speed some things up. You might need to adjust the camera. Again, you might need to stretch your road out or your ground or any of your scenery out to um, compensate for that camera pan so you have enough room to pan. Those are just some minor details you may need to tweak with before you render this out. But once you are done with that, you can go to File and Save, and then File, Export Animation. And I've already gone through all these details um, in the previous tutorial when I exported out the first animation. So you just choose your options just like before, and then you render out, and you wait, and then you can watch the video. And be sure you keep the video somewhere safe because we will be putting it together with all the other shots we'll be animating in a future lesson. Anyway, that does it for me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.